Today we're going to be doing something very, very interesting, guys. We're going to be blending lots of different concepts and we're going to be back testing it live uh, together. So we're going to be talking about a few kind of taboo topics in the trading industry as well. So I've prepared uh, just an initial example for you and then we'll go back and we'll try and find um, other examples of it. Um, but the first concept is the most controversial one, which is Martingale. Now, if you don't know what Martingale is, Martingale is extremely risky. It is destined to fail, but there is a reason that I'm bringing it up right now. So if you don't know what Martingale is, it's the idea that if I take a loss, I basically double my position size, which I'll represent with, you know, bigger bar than the first one. Um, and then I just keep doubling it until my uh, until it flips to a win. And then I revert to the original position size. Now, the real the, there are a few downsides to this. The first one is the exponential increase in drawdown. Now, the, an example of this is if I risk one on the first trade, then I risk two on the second, then four, then eight, then 16, then 32. This is actually a double-edged sword because you may look at these and be like, wow, that increases quickly, but it actually increases even quicker than this. And the reason is, is because, yes, you're risking this and then this and then this, but you also need to take into account that you've lost all of the previous before you risk this new number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in brackets what we would be at in terms of how much of a hit the actual account has taken. So at this point, we would have been three. Why? 3%. Because yes, we've lost two on this one, but we also lost one on the previous. So then let's find the next one. Then it is seven total. Then we jump all the way up to 15. And by the time we get here, we're looking at 31. And by the time we get here, we're looking at 63. So you can see that this increases massively and how likely you are to see consecutive losses in a row comes down to your win rate, which we will determine with this, okay, WR. So let's look at the likelihoods of certain things happening. So we can see right here that, you know, let's just say you had a 50-50. Now, if you had a one-to-one -one risk reward, right, in a random environment, then we would expect over the long run for you to come out with about a 50-50 distribution, meaning you've got a 50% win rate. So let's look at that. So this along the top is the probability of seeing X consecutive losing trades um, within a 50 trade period. So for example, if we see this six column here, this is six losing trades in a row, the likelihood of that happening every 50 trades. So if we go down to 50%, we can see there's a 97.1% chance of seeing six losers in a row every 50 trades. That's going to be very significant because then in relationship to Martingale, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That means that if we were to incur that, that means we're guaranteed almost a 63% drawdown every 50 trades. Now, that's just assuming you risk 1%. If you risk 2%, the account's blown. If you risk less than that, it might give you a little bit more leeway, but it will only really give you another trade, typically. If you do 0.5% to start instead of 1%, you know, you'll, you'll still end up on this same sequence, just kind of one back, if that makes sense. Anyway, this is really the trouble with Martingale. And so in order to solve these problems, people have always looked to win rate as the solution, right? And they've also looked at risk reward. So for example, instead of a one-to-one, -one, what if you did a one-to-three? Because then you don't need to double the position size every single time. You know, you can go from, let's just say one on the first one to maybe 1.2, then 1.44, et cetera. So the exponential increase in the amount of risk that you're taking goes down significantly. This seems logical and it seems reasonable, but there is a problem with this. As soon as you increased the risk reward, your win rate suffered. This means that the likelihood that this streak of losers goes up significantly. Now, I'm going to show you the difference here because the break even rate, you know, just in the same way as we did with a um, one to one in a random environment, assuming no edge or anything like that, we would assume that this would have a 50 50 distribution. Why? Because the target and the stop are equally distant from the entry. Over here, however, the target is three times further away. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means the break even rate of this system, meaning in a random environment, how well would it perform over the long run? Well, we would expect a 25% win rate. Why is this so significant in this context? Well, because if we go to this, Okay, and we look, 25% win rate. There's an 82.2% chance that we will see 11 losing trades every 50 trades. That is extremely significant, even if this value has dipped down 
tremendously, this is still going to cause us to run into issues. The main lesson that I'm trying to get across here is that you are, it's going to be very difficult to find some sort of loophole. We want an edge. That's the first thing that we need. But the second thing that we need, in fact, let me write this down. So the first thing that we need is we still need to have an edge. And the second thing that we need is we need to, if we are going to implement some sort of Martingale approach, we need to implement a, uh, a modified version if we are going to do it. Now, again, I'm going to put if here because it's not something I recommend doing. I'm just an idiot online. Um, so take everything with a pinch of salt and also make sure to do your own research and especially do your own backtesting. But what could a modified Martingale look like? Well, the problem <clears throat> was when we switched from this risk reward to this risk reward. And the reason is, is not because of the win rate, it's because of the more important, in this case, the 75% loss rate. Now, this is just the opposite of a win rate. If you've got a 50% win rate, you've got a 50% loss rate most of the time. However, what if I went break even before a one-to-one? -one? So if we just stretch this out here so that they're the same size pretty much. If we, let's just say, did something like this. We went break even at this point. Why would we do that? Well, because the win rate of this risk reward is going to be really, really high. It's going to be at least 80% just in a random environment. But obviously the cost of that is your wins are way smaller than your losses. But if we went break even there instead, what would essentially do is we would lock in the loss rate of this high win system, but and exchange lots of our wins and some of the other losses for break evens. Yes, it's not the most sexy way to trade. But then when we eventually do just have a move that just comes in, spikes down and comes down, then especially with the Martingale applied as well, what we get is a massively um, reduced risk exposure with Martingale. So this is step one. This is step one to understanding Martingale. Now, there do come with a few cons of doing this. The first one is it becomes a little harder without a clear edge to find scenarios where price is likely to come in and then just bolt away because even you know price coming in and then kind of coming down to the break even point you know as, even as soon as it does that we're out right now yes we could just re-enter we could just keep re-entering until it eventually happens and that's fine that's basically the premise of the system but this can take a while and so if we can produce you know at least some of the time high probability scenarios that's really what we're going to be looking for and we're going to be talking about that um, in this video um but really this is the idea this is the premise so if we're looking at this right here let's look at what an 80 percent win rate would give us okay so there's a 7.2 percent chance of seeing five or four losses in a row every 50 trades now keep in mind if we were to stretch this over 100 trades 200 trades all of these numbers would increase okay which is what makes trading doubly risky okay because even this is not giving you the full picture if you stretch it out over a long enough period. And that's also why the edge is so important as well. Having rules for your actual entry is going to be so critical. Now, I do talk about rules a little bit on this channel. Um, I, we have our own very strict rules in the Discord um, community. Um, but really, I just want to get your head around the theory of this today. Um, so ideally, we want to be edging towards 85% you know, maybe edging towards 90% because you can see the differences is, you know, when we're seeing a 0.5% chance of having four losses in a row, that's going to be very, very helpful for us because it allows us to predefine our risk. Whether we go for full Martingale, whether we go for a variant of it, maybe 1.5x instead of a 2x, these are all things that you need to figure out by yourself, um, you know, understanding the right levels and all these sorts of things. Um, but just getting the premise down here, we're just going to take an example and then work um, with that. So the next element is edge, right? So what are we going to do in terms of an edge? Well, really, all we're looking for is some kind of basic system. Now, we're going to be using multiple time frames for this. We're going to be using the weekly, we're going to be using the, um, yeah, I think maybe the weekly and the one hour would be good. We're going to be using simple, what I call rejection levels. Um, these are levels that tend to have a pretty high um, kind of come in and leave rate, which is what's ideal with uh, the sort of scenario that we're looking for. So instead of a load of theory, feel free to screenshot this, do whatever you've got to do. Um, and 
let's look at this example. So we'll look at one that's already happened first uh, because that's going to be very, very important. So depending on how you mark out levels, some people just mark out general levels. Uh, the levels really aren't going to be overly important, um, at least not this type of level because there's a few different types. Um, what I'm most interested in here, I'm just going to refine it a little bit and mark out this uh, fair value imbalance, whatever the hell like, you want to call it, it really doesn't matter. Um, whether you use that, whether you use the volume profile during this period to find out where that high volume area was, if it would just load. So weird that it's not loading. Let me try again. Um, okay. <laughs> this is uh not doing too well anyway whatever i can tell just from looking at, at this where the volume would lie it would lie where price is moving through the most and we can see it's around about there why because prices move through this level the most so it'd be around about there but i'm not going to leave that marked on just because that is what it is it's just a visual guide for where the volume may be okay so we've got that on the weekly now the second thing i'm looking for on the weekly is i'm looking for a confirmation so i found the level now i want to see that it's rejected that level and we can see from the close of this candle right here which um, is the open of this candle that's going to be good because it's a nice clean rejection nice wick nice body close so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a vertical line I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit here. I'm going to put it here. Now, why did I put it here? Because this is the open of this candle, and the open of this candle is the same as the close of this candle. So when we go down to the lower time frame, we can have some context for where we are. Second thing I'm going to do, I'm going to mark out the top of this level. Why? Because this is what I mentioned earlier when I said a rejection level. It's basically a bullish candle followed by a bearish candle, or vice versa, a bearish candle followed by a bullish candle like we see here. The body of that level often acts as a really nice level um, that we can look into. So now what I'm going to do um, is I'm debating the four hour or the one hour. We'll look at both. We'll see which one looks better. Um, let's have a little look here. Okay. So from this point, uh, really what we're looking for is just understanding what type of setup we are going to go for. Um, so for the purposes of this, Hmm. Just trying to think what would be simpler to explain. Look at the time of day. So this would probably be too late. Okay. Okay. So this would be what we would consider our ideal zone around here. This is during good kind of New York session, these sorts of hours around about here. Um, I'm not going to extend it down, but just take a mental note of where that is. So what we can do here is we can look for the exact same thing that we've seen before. Okay. What do we have here? Bullish candle followed by a bearish candle. Oh, don't know what happened there. Like this. Now you'll see, and yes, obviously guys, this is hindsight, but this is the only way to show it um, because otherwise, uh, you know, if I'm, I'm going through the examples live um, straight away, then it may be a little bit confusing. So right here, you can see we have this rejection. We then leave. We then come back and we tap into it. Now, yes, whilst this is a perfect example, it doesn't even matter whether it's perfect or not. And the reason is, is because, because the win rate will naturally be so high because of where the break even is. Oh, sorry, the loss rate will be so low with this system regardless. It's more so about just understanding how to take losses and take the break evens and then continue to stay disciplined and stay executing it becomes a little bit less about the perfect entry because even with this right looking at where our stop would be within this overall structure like it'd be kind of a roundabout here for me there's no real magic to this because it doesn't really matter that much again you do need an edge i'm just kind of giving you an overview of a perspective here but let's just say you were going for a roundabout that maybe just stretch it to one to three because the math is a little bit easier <clears throat> now, if we had a break-even rate around about here, so where would that be? So let's just mark out the fact that this would have been our original target. But then our break-even rate, if we had a 1 to 15, would be here. So as soon as price hits this level, we are break-even. We're risk-free. Okay. Now, at this point, this is going to be very significant because let's just say we took seven losses before this. And let's just say we were going... Um, seven losses is unlikely with this system. Let's just say we took four losses. Okay, again, it's still pretty unlikely based on where the um, the system is, but let's just say we did. Let's just say we were using full Martingale, which is definitely more risky. Risk 1% on the first one, then two, then four, 
than eight. So on this position, we would have running um, 16. This is pretty big. Now, the reason it's big is, as I said, you know, each one of these um, in cut goes up quite significantly. But let's just say this is what we were looking at. So we go to seven, then we go up to uh, 15, and then we go to 31. So we've got a lot of resting on this. You know, at this point, if we lose, if we lost this, we'd be minus 31% on the account, assuming that this is 1%, you know, you could start at 0.5%, whatever. Um, so at this point, when we then win with a 16 times position, and it's a triple, when we win, what we come out with, we imagine all of these up until this point have been minuses. In fact, I'll just put it in. We have 16 times by the lovely number of three. So we have plus 48. Now, what this means is it means that we didn't actually sacrifice the 16 because this was the same trade that we actually won because it was 16 times three. So we can get rid of that. So that means that we were negative 15, but then we win plus 48, which gives us a really big skew. If we minus 15 from 48, we have a net, meaning the total of plus 33, let's just say percent, or the correct way to do it would be R, okay? Now, that's going to be very, very significant. Even if the overall system was break-even, this would just be a way of manipulating the risk management to work in our favor, okay? Whether it comes down, whether it comes out and stops us at break-even, doesn't matter because we've engineered the system in a way that allows us to be a little bit more flexible with our win rate, identifying our loss rate, and then playing around with Martingale because Martingale is the perfect strategy, but only if you have unlimited money. None of us have unlimited money, therefore it's not the perfect strategy. And don't get me wrong, this isn't the holy grail. There are nuances to this. You need to understand how to get entries like these. You need to focus you need to have the resilience to be able to take lots and lots of break evens over and over again but this is a framework for allowing risk management to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you okay so we'll go through a couple more examples um and uh, we'll try and do a couple in um real time so let's just go back um i don't know back over here maybe to see if we do get presented with anything. <clears throat> so what I'm really looking for here, uh, based on where we're at, is ideally I want to see prices kind of come back into this area. So similar to where we're at now, I want to see a nice clear rejection candle. So we've seen that perfectly on the next candle. So I'm going to have this here. Now the close of this candle is going to be the open of the next one. So I'm going to have this here as well. Um, and then I want to mark out the potential area we could come and reach. We could come through there or we could come down there. That's me done on the weekly. I'm going to move down to the one hour. We need to wait and see. So we're still not at that point um, of where the week actually ends yet. So let's just wait and see. Just double checking that we haven't read that wrong. Uh, I forgot the weekly doesn't close straight away on each candle. So just ignore that for now. Let's just wait and see. Okay, so this is still going to be the level but we just need to wait for prices to come down. I'm just going to go to the daily to make sure I don't miss it. Perfect. So go to the one hour here. So if this was the new week. We then come up to this level. At this point, um, we can do a couple of things, but the thing I'm most interested in here is ideally if we could get a price move back up to this high here and then looking to just put a stop above this previous high and moving down to let's just say our one to three point just to be um just to be clear <clears throat> so let's mark this out here and then look at where that break even point would be if we come back up here at all Okay, so this would be a break even for us. Why? Because we came in and came back there. Um, now, one thing that's also, also worth noting is there's nothing technically wrong with just going for another scenario. So sometimes what I'll do in this scenario is I'll just keep entering in the same way that I was before um, with the same kind of fundamental idea. So just 
This does take a little time. It's a little bit fiddly to mark out. So this would be the break even point. You can see that this did hit break even. So we're just going to not waste time marking out the whole position. We'll just do that there. And you can see the reason this is okay is because it's very likely that we're going to have some kind of a retracement. And that normally is enough to get to break even. Worst case, you get a loss, but 99, well, not 90%, 90% of the time, roughly, depending on what, what break even point you have, you'll be having a break even scenario. So it's like, it's really not the end of the world. And so that's why I'm more comfortable with just continuing to sell these. Because eventually, if you keep doing it this way, you're going to hit probably a fairly high probability area. Okay. And so again, let's just wait and see. Yeah, so we've got 15. Okay, so again, break even. We've come back up to this high volume area. So again, just going to sell that again. You can see this is a boring way to trade. It's really boring. But at the end of the day, if it works, it works. Um. Of course, guys, none of this is financial advice, right? This is just to spur your imaginations. But let's just wait. Ooh. <laughs> I accidentally pressed the play button. Again, we have a break-even scenario. Why? We whipped down. As soon as we came back up, we would be at break-even. Again, boring, boring, boring. And I shouldn't have pressed play because if we'd kept doing this all the way up, we would have had a break-even basically on every candle. But then the most recent one, I know I missed it, but it's literally you've seen me do it it's the last 10 minutes. Okay, here would be where things may be beginning to pay off. So we have one to three here. Um, so this is line number one. And then line number two would be around about there, I think. Ooh, even less. Okay, so this is break even again. And so again, we would just enter, you guessed it, again. Stop, you know, roughly above there. Uh, where is that break-even point? Be about here. And you can see it takes a lot of the pressure off the extreme technicals needed because it's like most of the time, the overwhelming majority of the time, it's just going to be break-even scenario after break-even scenario. I quite like to continue doing this until we eventually do hit a win. However, what I'm going to do for simplicity, because you know the system, um, just to make things a bit quicker, I'm just going to just assume that I'm basically selling at the end of each one of these candles. And then we'll just wait until we eventually see a winner because all of these would have been break even. This would have been break even. Break even again. Okay, and that would have been our winner. Now we may have taken a loss throughout here but even if we did worst case we took one loss during here maybe two i would say one looking at how this moved here okay let's say we took we did take one loss we then doubled the position size just as an example but then eventually we are going to run into that scenario where we've come up maybe here or wherever it is and the break even point is like there we come down and then we eventually sink off and go back to our point like this is eventually what's going to happen. So it's boring. Yes, extremely boring. Um, but it's simple. And it just means like if you can just sit through the break evens, realize that the actual reason for why you're entering isn't always going to be super important. And just using Martingale in a strategic way, it can, that's the key word there, can be something that could be worth adding to a plan. Um, so guys, I really hope that this has helped um it's a little bit of a different way of looking at things i've never seen anybody talking about these sorts of things um the you know these sorts of ideas are the result of years of being in the trenches and trying to understand all of the different um you know connections and how things work and how things relate to each other um so i'm happy to share these things with you if you like a more structured approach to your trading something that's literally you know borderline copy paste you know with a simple two-step system that's black and white and allows you to focus on the more important things things that have gotten results like we've gotten in the last few months feel free to check out the community tab feel free to check out some of the last videos i'll leave a link below um then i'd recommend joining because it's a great community in there we are it's, i would i'm very very confident it is the best trading community out there at this point um, there's just no other community that's so transparent about all of our results um, and the student results and all of that stuff as well. So um, yeah, so I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.